So now you had a, your question was about mediumship. Yeah, it's the struggle, lack of a better word, with when I first came into this class, which I just felt like I was led. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but you know that's the way it worked. But I, in the beginning, for the first six months, because now it's been about a year, the first six months, all I knew was two things. I still know this. One is that there's this love and acceptance and this openness here. There's no judgment, which is a rare environment. And and we must all be connected to some level of loving source energy or I don't think I'd feel this. So that's first. Secondly, I felt like whatever I was being taught or exposed to was leading me to what I know to be the ultimate source, which I call God. And I got deeper in knowing him and knowing how to expand my view of him. Almost like on a TV, you know, where you change the setting so you go to the movie screen setting. You know, broad, it got broader, more aware, deeper. But then, in the last six or so months, Things pop up, people pop up, that are from the traditional world of, you know, going to church and knowing God and, you know, worshiping, worshiping God. And every other month, I'll be like, I'll be fine because then I'll realize that that's their thing and I view it differently, or some of it differently, some of it I view the same. But there's still this thing that keeps sticking at me, which is, am I being taught here to connect with spirits or with dead people or with something other than God, the life force, the, the, what I call it. And all I know is that I know now better than ever, partly I think because of this experience with you guys, that God, that life force, he, he wants to merge with me. And so that is a wonderful discovery, to know that he's not out there, he's not up in the pulpit, he's not, you know, he's not anywhere. He is all of that, actually. He's all of that but he's also right inside of me. So, but this whole thing about, am I talking to dead people and not spending the time and the energy focusing on connecting with my own God self? Because if I'm connecting with, let's say, spirits for Beth, you know, that want to send her a message to, for frigid needs, and I'm not focusing on my own source for me. And so that's what I'm questioning. Like, what am I doing? Okay. What is the purpose of mediumship? Okay, well, first, um, as far as the class goes, the first portion of the class is to help you with that connection. And I, and I call it the source. But when we move into the second part of the class, and we haven't made it to mediumship yet, okay, so we've done the clairvoyance, the clairvoyance wasn't necessarily for messages, the whole purpose of that was to expose you to it, for one, and secondly, to set you on a path, okay, the second part phase was when we were doing the psychometry in that. We're still not necessarily focusing on messages. We're focusing on information and how information 
radiate from objects. And in this phase, we'll be focusing on the tarot. And I'm not going to touch on that a whole lot because that's what we're stepping into. And the second, or the last phase, is focused on mediumship. Now, mediumship is when we look for messages or receive messages for others. Now, mediumship is not necessarily about this connection with the source. While many people will tell you it is, okay, it's, it's not. If you read in, which book is it? Uh, I think it's Corinthians, uh, probably 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where they talk about the gift. And there's a couple others, I think one is in James, where they talk about messages or prophecy and the purpose of prophecy. And what it says about that is that the purpose is to help you believe in the source or in God. And when the bearer gets it right, it strengthens their belief as well. But essentially, that's what it's for. It's, it's, it's like a hook. It's to strengthen your belief in the fact that there is something else there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mediumship alone, or psychic, doing psychic readings alone, is not going to help you with that connection. Meditation helps you with that connection. Uh, understanding yourself helps you develop that connection. Seeking to better yourself helps you with that connection. Because the purpose is different. When I'm called on to do messages, it's to help the faith of others, essentially. When I give a message to, to say, Janice, and I get it right, and she's not familiar with the messages and everything, it's like, wow, how did you know that? You know, it's like the first time each of you received a message from a message bearer and a connection with me. The first question that comes to mind is, how do you know that? And then a lot of times, the second question that comes to mind is, how can I do that? You see, spiritualism was developed because of mediumship. But spiritualism is about life. It's not about doing the seance or the messages. It's about life. The messages that come through console others. They help give direction to others when they're lacking in direction. But, you know, it's, it's part of it. The, the two are supposed to go together, hand in hand. But a lot of times, they're separate things. Um, if you were to attend a different spiritualist church, then the speaker is most likely going to read from the Bible and preach. Unfortunately, that's different here. Here, we're concerned with, with you enhancing your satisfaction with life. Uh, Reverend Thomas and I have two different approaches to that. And, and I hope that, that, that those that attend appreciate that. Because you've got, got the way he sees things and the way I see things. A lot of times it's different. But we're still looking at the same goal, because everything still lines up. And we're not necessarily reading out of the Bible saying, this is it. Because it's not. And in fact, we'll touch on that for those of you that will be attending tomorrow. That's 
go part of the discussion for tomorrow. So does that help? Does that answer your question? Yeah, except for one thing. Okay. So I could make the analogy that um, what you just explained, meaning sharing that message mm -hmm. versus what a priest does, you know, in a church. Mm -hmm. He shares a message. He shares his view of what the Bible is or what he thinks. Exactly. Okay. So, but... There is this danger, I think, that if you end up, if you miss, if it's not clear and you miss the fact that those messages from the medium, the person, mm -hmm. is meant to draw, like, uh, share in deeper into her knowing her source, her God, I mean, our God, but then she, or any person, could end up becoming addicted or relying on the messenger instead of the message. And the message is really her hope, his love, and that source is within you. So, that fear or that danger, I think, is like one of the number one reasons why there's all this argument over religion in church. And I'm asking it here in this realm, but I guess, I guess it's just calling me to be responsible. Okay, which I think we even used to talk about that once in class about taking Very responsibility yes. for your own journey. Mm -hmm. So that's really important then that any really good church or any really good messenger makes that clear right up front. Yes. Very good. You got it. You're on the right track. And that's why you said it's so important about these messages are for you alone. Precisely. They are for you Alone, because the truth is that message that you give, and I'm just looking at Denise, like whatever it is, she'll maybe she'll understand, but she's got to take it in and understand it, because you're giving her a message and you have no idea truly what it means, and nor are you supposed to. You're supposed to give it as pure as you can, just like a telegram, right? Precisely. Okay, got it. All right, good. Thank you. I'm so fuzzy, so leery. I think that's just because of how I've been raised and what I've been taught to believe. So now you're right. Now it's causing me to look at that. Well, very good. Okay, good. Thank that's you. Very, what you are experiencing, I have it.